Hey everyone, you with Tom, and thanks for joining us today on Tesla and EV news on Ludicrous Feed from Australia to the world. I'm joined this afternoon by my co-host Riz from Carloop. Hi Riz, how are you? Yeah, going well, Tom. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. I'm excited to be able to bring to everyone episode two of the series that we're doing. Uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, news headlines that we'll be going through today. So uh, we'll be talking about uh, Model Y performance uh, with track mode enabled. We'll also be talking about electric uh, conversions for uh, current existing utes, such as the Hilux and Ford Ranger in Australia. Uh, full self-driving beta will be dropping for all North American uh, drivers. Uh, who have the FSD package, so that's good news for them. Aptera says it'll be using Tesla's charge connector in its solar electric car. Uh, Caterpillar Cat Brand will be using uh, mining electric vehicles for its operations. Domino's to be rolling out uh, 800 Chevy Bolt electric vehicles in the US. Uh, the Neo ET5 shooting brake vehicle was seen in road tests in China. Great Wall begins shipping 300 Coffee 01 PHEVs from Shanghai to Europe. And finally, we'll go through some of the uh, top EV manufacturers or battery manufacturers worldwide in 2022. Let's start with this one, Nash. Uh, in Tesla in the Gong, uh, has tweeted Elon, as he often does, and asks for uh, Model Y uh, performance to uh, have track mode. So, uh, I know I'll be uh, looking forward to that when our performance Y comes later in the year. And I believe, Riz, you've got a family member as well waiting for a, a Model Y performance. Yeah, so that's very exciting. Obviously, we know Nash has high connections. He reaches out to whoever. If it's you know the richest man in the world, he'll, he'll get it out there. And um, yeah, I'm great to hear Elon. It's been asked a couple of times, but obviously, um, given we know that um, Model Y performance um, will be coming fairly shortly toward Australia. It's good that Nash has put it out there for all the performance order holders in Australia, like yourself, Tom. Um, should be should be a great addition uh, for those that you know, if nothing else, want to take it to the track for just a bit of a run around. Um, awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking forward to seeing those videos of uh, Model Y performance holders uh, with track mode. Uh, this article that you wrote in the Driven there, uh, Riz, uh, Toyota Hilux and Ford Ranger Utes to go electric as pricing revealed for mass EV conversions. Quite topical given that the first uh, electric Ute has been launched by LDV in Australia. Let's scroll down to some of the pricing that you listed here. So uh, we've got, let's see, so two, uh, two converted Ute options possibly, a standard pack with 240 kilometers of range, extended pack with 360 kilometers of range, uh, and... Uh, Where's the pricing here? So some of the pricing there potentially in that forty to fifty, sixty thousand dollar mark, depending on whether you want four by two or four by four. Yeah, that's um, you know it's interesting to see. We need a mix of um, basically list, list all options uh, in terms of what are we going to do with existing fleets when we can't get um, electric utes. I mean, the first one's just launched uh, this week uh, by LDV, which is great to see. But at the same time, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of youths running around. And if those organizations with larger fleets of them would like to electrify a bit sooner, this could be an option. And, and the pricing, you know, it, it may seem expensive, but converting like a traditional, um, let's say an old school MG to an electric car, it's anywhere between twenty to $30,000 if you're converting a classic car and giving it a new life. Um, in this case, they're obviously focusing on the what the fleets currently have, which is relatively recent utes, the most popular of being the Hilux and the Ford Ranger. Um, yeah, I think under 60 grand, it it is it's acceptable given the kind of work. And as they scale, uh, I think it's a Rove that's doing this in Australia, as Rove scales and gets past their early adopter customers, I'm sure the prices will eventually come down as well. So it's good to see. Yeah, it's, as you said, Riz, it's giving uh, uh, existing fleet a new lease of life. Uh, and Rove uh, is, a, yeah, it's, we saw these guys uh, at a recent EV Expo in Canberra, the AEVA Expo as well. So 
If you're interested, uh, Rove, electric conversion startup launched by two former senior Alassian executives, as mentioned here in the article. So yeah, for so forty to fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and um, and it's going to uh, have a sixty-four to to ninety-six kilowatt hour battery, depending on the range, and up to eighty kilowatts of uh, CCS DC charging and eleven kilowatts of AC charging as well with V2L power points. So you know everything you kind of need uh, for a trade vehicle. All right, let's look at the next article, which is uh, Elon Musk's tweeting uh, a couple of days ago, or yesterday rather, saying that uh, Tesla full self-driving beta is now available to anyone in North America who requests it from the car screen. Uh, congrats to the Tesla Autopilot AI team on achieving a major milestone. So that's great. He did promise, I think, uh, it will be released sort of more universally. Um, it's good to see North America getting it. Hopefully we'll see this in Australia in 2023. Uh, yep. Fingers crossed. Awesome stuff. I think um, the good thing is uh, Nash is already tweeting him back, telling yes. him that we need it here. So it's... It's happening. He's representing Australia when it comes to Elon communication. So great to see. And I'm, I'm sure we'll see it in the next 12 months or so. Yeah. I better give it a like, Nash. Sorry. There you go. There's a like for you. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. Um, and uh, yeah, so Aptera, this is from Electric. Aptera says it will use Tesla's charge connector and its solar electric car. Now, this is relevant because Tesla did announce uh, recently that it's opening its IP uh, for... Uh, its charger, its plug to uh, everyone to use, and you know, I guess CCS2 is kind of its kind of the de facto worldwide universal standard. Um, so it's good to see, I guess, one other brand wanting to use the Tesla connector for its cars, mm. and that's in the form of Aptera. Do you think we'll see much uptake of the Tesla connector worldwide, Riz? Just as an aside, um, I think um, uh, I guess the current European standard is the CCS and um, we might fit some of the newer brands. If there's new brands that eventually launch, it's a very competitive space to be able to scale. So yeah, uh, we possibly will. So it's good to see Aptera trying something new, uh, but I'd say probably will stick to the CCS standard across the industry. Yeah, I agree. Possibly in North America, the um, Tesla plug might be used more readily than uh, over here in Asia, Pacific, and Europe. Next article is uh, Caterpillar. Cat advances sustainable mining with the first battery electric 793 large truck. It's amazing seeing that truck, how big it is compared to the people in front of it there. It's a great pick. Um, I'll just read you this paragraph here, which I find quite fascinating. So during the demo, Caterpillar's large 793 mining truck plowed through a uh, seven kilometer course, achieving a top speed of 60 kilometers an hour and traveling up to one kilometer at a 10% gradient at 7.5 miles per hour. So it's good to see that um, CAT is showing that it can be done uh, mining using electric vehicles. Mm, and mining is so big in Australia, right? Like the relevance of um, heavy machinery to be electrified. You know, you, it's not only the fact that, you know, they're, they're doing it, it's better for the planet, but also technologically, it's let me we know electric vehicles are safer these things are hauling stuff up and down with regenerated braking and other things sort of working in their favor to charge the batteries as they're going down gradients and stuff it just makes sense so yeah really really cool to see uh such large rigs sort of being electrified and australia i'm sure will have some of the larger companies place some large orders on them over the coming years yeah, absolutely. And I was interested to read that um, it can actually capture heat uh, down in below in the mines and capture it back into the battery as well. So that's Ooh. kind of regen breaking in a different way, uh, capturing heat energy instead of kinetic energy. So, yeah, exciting times indeed for the mining industry using electric vehicles. Uh, this one's quite interesting. Uh, Domino's to roll out nationwide fleet of 800 Chevy Bolt electric vehicles in the U.S., uh, let's scroll down here to see what those cars look like. It's uh, pretty funky there. Hopefully this gets translated over to uh, Australia. Maybe we'll see some, I don't know, what's uh, what's a brand that's uh, BYD? Model 3s? Dolphins, yes. Dolphins, uh, yeah. Yep. Dolphins delivering pizzas. You never thought you'd hear that in a in a <laughs> sentence. Uh, but yeah, that's that's could be the possibility, yep. um, especially in the smaller hatchback 
format. I think there's not a lot of options. We did have the the Holden Barina once upon a time. Mm. That was sort of small, but they don't do anything like that anymore. So, yeah, it's good to see um, large chains that do lots of miles in America, I guess, to start to electrify their fleets and show their customers that they're more than just about delivering pizzas that are uh, quality assured by robots. That's right. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because the way I understand how pizza, pizza franchises work here is that each suburban store will deliver to its local area. So, you know, having an electric car that can come back, recharge briefly, go out again, recharge, it makes a lot of sense to have an EV as its delivery model. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens in Australia. For sure. All right, uh, next one is uh, the Neo ET5 shooting brake scene in road tests. Now, I had to look up what shooting brake meant. It's not a, that technical term. It's actually another term for wagon or a station wagon. It is. It's kind of an old-fashioned term. But, yeah, this car was seen driving around uh, somewhere in China uh, on a road test. Yeah, so shooting brake is a, <laughs> it's not a term. I think Mercedes has used it a couple of times with their CLS um, which was their luxury sedan, and then they had a station wagon. Um, but every, even European brands call it something else. But it's cool to see. It reminds me a little bit of the, um, uh, uh, the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, which is their wagon, which is one of the coolest cars on the road if you ever see one. Quite rare. This would be really, really cool. Um, obviously very expensive as well, but uh, performance in a wagon generally means big money yeah the, the station wagon uh, or the shooting brake or whatever you want to call it a state has kind of gone out of fashion in the last you know a couple of decades the suv has taken over our streets in sydney i'm sure melbourne is melbourne as well um so i you know i my first car was a wagon of sorts so i think i would like to see i learned and learned how to drive in a wagon so i wouldn't mind seeing a bit of a comeback yeah, yeah it's um they're unique right like audi does an ice rs6 and i think they're like 300 plus thousand dollars so they're rare they're unique um something like that uh, zika 001 that's also a geely polestar brand um they that that car will i think have close to a thousand kilometers of range uh the image that they're showing in the, um at that section so shooting brakes, I think, are making a bit of a classy comeback, or wagons are. So, yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to see one in person. Um, yeah, just good to see brands trying new things. Yep. Absolutely, yep. If uh, anyone from Neo is watching, uh, Riz and I, we're happy to have a look at these cars for you in Australia. <laughs> All right, next one is another Chinese brand. Great Wall begins shipping 300 Coffee 01 PHEVs from Shanghai to Europe. Oh, we're touching on PHEVs again, Riz. Oh, it's, and and they should they should be coming to Coffee Central, Melbourne, <laughs> not going to Europe. <laughs> but no, it's yeah. The, I, I as I sort of touched on the last episode, PHEVs are a larger market in Europe than they are here. So I, I guess it makes more sense until we have sort of fuel emission standards that penalise selling off ice vehicles. Um, the, a lot of these vehicles will be heading towards Europe where they sort of get incentivized to sell more of them. And maybe if this electric car discount, which um, uh, this bill goes through, uh, it may have already done so this week, but um, would prob we might see more pure battery electric vehicles and the PHEVs will keep going towards Europe as such. That's very interesting this, for you to say that uh, there were there are more PHEV or the market for PHEVs are bigger bigger in Europe, and I wonder whether it's because uh, they were sort of earlier in the transition, so they were using PHEVs as a bit of a stepping stone, whereas we have kind of skipped all that and we're trying to get onto the onto the BEVs or battery electric vehicles faster than trying to go through step by step with PHEVs. Mm, I I think that's that's true, Tom. That's part of the reason, and the other reason that I just logically thinking right the distances in australia are quite a, a little bit longer than some of the european cities so if these phevs have a range of 30 40 50 kilometers um on a on a on a single charge with their 10 12 kilowatt hour batteries then it makes sense 
you can sort of drive them to work and back and it might be you know 20 kilometers both ways type of thing and it's sort of stop and go city traffic the PHEVs make a little bit more sense not saying the owners a lot of them use it that way Mm -hmm. um but you know they may just think oh it's there but it's um yeah i think the distance is a little bit longer and we may bypass the whole PHEV revolution and go straight into um battery electrics yeah no i agree i think i think given we're a bit slower here in australia with the transition we can kind of learn from uh you know lessons learned from uh other markets overseas so yeah we, it's one benefit of being a bit slower for sure and finally for uh the last article for today's episode uh top 10 ev battery manufacturers in 2022 so uh, no surprises there. The big players are Cattle, CATL from uh, China, as well as BYD capturing uh, almost half the market and then Panasonic making up the last 10% or so. Uh, LG is there in the bottom corner uh, and then a whole host of other uh, battery manufacturers. Interestingly, uh, most of them I can see, in fact, yeah, the vast majority of them are from somewhere in Asia, whether it be China, Japan or Korea. Hmm. Um, that's... That's what I guess um, they're trying to change in the U.S. now with the Infl- Inflation Reduction Act that's supposed to incentivize, um, you know, building batteries or making batteries and processing materials in the U.S. That could be years away. I mean, I can only see this, the CATL and BYD's market share growing um, with some of their recent announcements as well. For those that may not know, CATL and BYD both supply battery packs to Tesla. Uh, BYD, I believe, have started shipping some of their um, packs to Germany uh, at Giga Berlin this year. And CATL supplies battery packs to all the rear-wheel drive Model 3 and Model Ys delivered to Australia. So, you know, any Tesla that's sort of been delivered this year that's a, a single motor rear wheel drive will have CATL's battery in it in Australia. So we, it's um, that's a partnership I think will only continue for Tesla. Yeah, and, and I think Tesla used to use Panasonic a lot more, uh, and you can see that the market share is dropping and certainly heading over towards China for BYD and uh, CATL cattle. Mm-hmm. So yeah, interesting times ahead for sure. And I'll just read up here: uh, EV battery market is expected to grow from 17 billion to 95 billion from 2019 to 2028. So in the next decade, it's supposed to grow up to four times in size. It's uh, really quite incredible as we transition to electric. Oh, really quite incredible. All right, everyone, uh, that's it from uh, Riz and I today. They're the articles uh, that we found were important in today's episode of Tesla and EV News from Australia to the World on Ludicrous Feed. Uh, yeah, make sure you leave your comments below as to uh, what you thought of the articles. And if you've uh, seen anything else that you'd like us to touch on in the future, leave those comments as well. I also should also point out today that the um, EV discount bill passed today in uh, federal parliament. So that's great. We'll certainly touch on that next time and maybe even make a dedicated episode as well to explain what all that means. All right, everyone, take care. Uh, from Riz and myself, have a great night. And as always, happy charging. See you later. <laughs>